What's up everybody, John Crishone with Barron's Performance Warehouse here for some trailer talk. This week we're going to focus on coil springs as we know they've taken the Northeast by storm on the Northeast dirt modified market, but it's also one of the most universal components on a race car nationwide as well as globally. Here with me is Barron's Performance Warehouse sales staff member Chuck Schmidt as he's going to talk about some of the differences between coil springs and some of the accessories that are used to make these coil springs and how they apply on our race cars today. Chuck, tell me a little bit about the difference between a barrel spring and a straight spring. Well, the straight spring's been around forever. Two and a half inch diameter spring has most applications. They're, they're made in various sizes from two inches all the way to three inches and even bigger than that for different applications. Two and a half is the most common for the type of racing we do. The barrel spring was designed, as you can see, to use less material, better coil spacing, which allows you to have more travel. So the manufacturers use a, a, a higher tensile strength material so they can use less wire, more strength, and more travel. So a standard two and a half inch spring, no matter what the brand, will not travel quite as far as what a barrel spring will, just pick up by design. Thank you, Chuck. Now, another two sets of springs that we have over here uh, are a tender spring and a helper spring. Why would a customer want to use either one of these on a barrel spring or a straight spring? The tender spring is basically a spring that's six or eight pounds. There's no rate to this spring hardly at all. What we do is we use it as a locator for when a left front, right rear, right front, whatever droops out and your car's hanging on a jack and you want to set it back on the ground. This allows that spring to set really nice back into the right height adjuster so you don't have misalignment. The tender spring is a rate of 50, 7,500 pounds. Like you can see this one here, you can't even compress. This one adds extended load to a spring that's already there where this one doesn't. This is a locating spring. This puts in your equation an extended load number, which is something we'll go into later on. Big difference. Load, 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 load. That's all we hear on the coil spring conversation. Now, what is the big difference between rate versus load? Rate is what the spring is built and rated at. Like this one here is a 150. So that spring's a 150 all the way through travel. Load is where you pick a static load number, which is where your car sets at right height on your scale before you're ready to go on the racetrack. It's static. So that 150 spring, if it's compressed two inches, has 300 pounds of load. Okay, that's very simple to figure out. If it's a 200 pound spring compressed two inches, it's 400 pounds of load. That doesn't make it a 400 pound spring. It's the amount of load, okay? So when we look and we get working on, on a spring smashing machine, when you compress that thing to four inches of travel on the right front of like a big block modified, you're gaining load as you go. It doesn't matter what rate spring you have, it's the final load number that guys are concerned about. Perfect, so now you bring up the next question, which is when it comes to figuring out load, how do we do that? Well, the correct way to do it is with travel indicators. It's the only way that you have an accurate way of putting some kind of travel indicator, whether it be mechanical or electronic, on your car, going to make a lap on the racetrack, and seeing how far is my right front compressing, how far is my left rear extending. And when you get that, then you can come back to your spring smasher, and you can put your shock and spring combination there, run it to that number, and you'll get a load number, okay? Now, different racetracks require different loads, so that's a lesson for a whole other day, you know what I'm saying? But basically knowing how far your car travels, which can be done with your shock travel indicator, it's a very good idea, always push your shock travel indicator up before you hit the racetrack, always have somebody measure that when you come in, and write it down in your notes, because that way when you speak to us and you ask us a question about, a specific load number, how far are you traveling? Well, if you don't know, we can't help you. Perfect. So now we have a spring smasher by AccuForce here in the trailer, and Chuck is gonna show us how to smash a spring and some of the things that we're gonna be looking for during the smash. So Chuck, take it away. So the question we get, do I need a spring smasher? It's the latest, greatest piece of equipment out there, okay? We happen to, to uh, use the AccuForce spring smasher uh we sell the AccuForce spring smasher we work closely with the people who designed this machine uh our cars and 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 a lot of the late model market all use this particular type of machine there's other machines out there that are great as well there's nothing but if you are gonna race with a coilover car asphalt dirt late model modified it don't matter what anymore it's hard to race without this because there's so many combinations going on 
This machine will never ever tell you what to do, but it educates you on what you have. So when you're stacking two springs together or even going from a, a, a one shock to another shock with a different spring on it, when you learn and educate yourself on what your center to center number are and your static load, which is like what we talked about to start with, you can change anything you want. Put any shock, any spring combination, set your center to center, go back to your set and put it on your car. And I promise you, you will be within one tenth of one percent of where you were when your car came off the scales, which takes away from you don't get scales out at the racetrack. You know what I mean? Most guys don't anyway. And even once you get going on a machine like this, you don't even have to scale your car every week. You know what I mean? This way. So what we got here is two springs stacked together with a spring slider and a lockout nut internally on here. So what happens is the two springs travel as one and then it hits the lockout. Then it becomes the top spring is locked out and we're only going on the bottom spring. So we have a set test set up here. So you can see the two springs travel together. This slider is gonna hit this lockout nut here. And at that point, it becomes just the rate of the bottom spring, okay? What this is doing is taking two springs that are gonna travel linear, and wherever we decide to lock that out, it's gonna engage a different rate because it goes to a single spring, and it's gonna build like a progressive rate spring. Now, on our setup that we have over here, I noticed that you have a couple different spring rubbers. Can you talk a little bit about uh, what a spring rubber is and why you would wanna put a spring rubber on your springs? So, again, it goes back to the load number, okay? The olden days, we used to stick a spring rubber in a 200 pound spring in it, it would engage it. You know, there was a soft, a medium, a hard. It's become such a technical deal anymore, as you can see here. There's two different thicknesses of spring rubber. So it all depends where you want to engage and change that load. It's almost like stacking a spring, but different because you can put a rubber in here and change this 150 pound spring and engage that rubber through that travel at two or two and a half or three inches or wherever you'd like because of the thickness of the rubber and it will change that final load number is what you're looking at. So in the late model market, we'll run a stack spring on the right front. We'll have a bump spring on the shaft and then we'll add a spring rubber sometimes depending on where we want to increase that load through that four inch or four and a half inches of travel. Very good tuning tool. Uh, it works in every corner of the race car and just an awesome tool to have in your toolbox to adjust your load number, you know? Awesome. Uh, so, just to recap, uh, Barron's Performance Warehouse, we stock Eibach, Hypercoil, QA1, Draco, and even AFCO Springs. When it comes to our spring rubbers, RE Suspension, and Eibach Spring Rubbers, as well as Longacre, um, when it comes to our uh, dividers, um, RE Suspensions and Eibach, uh, as far as our lockout nut kits, they are brand specific to the shock that you are running. Um, if you have any questions on any of the coil spring stuff that we had talked about today, give us a call at 845-651-7389. Speak with any one of the Barron sales staff members. And that's this week's Trailer Talk Tip.